Hey guys, it's Brandon from Pixel Planet Studios. I'm so excited to show you three free tools that I've made for Adobe After Effects. Today, we're gonna look at the first one, which is called Opacity Buddy. The first thing that we're going to do is talk about how to install Opacity Buddy. Link is in the description below. If you look inside the zip folder, you'll see installation instructions and that will show you where to install it on Windows and where to install it on Mac. So I have this window open and I'm going to drag the entire Pixel Planet Studios folder inside of here. So once you do that, you'll go ahead and open After Effects. One other thing that we'll need to make sure we do, and this is also in the installation instructions, is go in here to our project settings and click expressions and make sure that JavaScript is enabled. These will take advantage of JavaScript inside of After Effects. So make sure JavaScript and not legacy extend script is enabled. Okay, inside this comp, we have a fake advertisement for my first pixel byte. And you see that all of these layers are parented to our thumbnail. But then you see if I bring up the keyframes of our thumbnail that the opacity fades out here of course, even though these layers would follow the position and scale and rotation of the thumbnail, they are not going to follow the opacity. So this is where Opacity Buddy comes in. And if I click on our YouTube logo, our lower text, and this uh, outline layer, and then come over to Effects and Presets, and if you installed it correctly, it will be under Animation Presets, Pixel Planet Studios, and then Opacity Buddy. So I'm going to double click this. And now Opacity Buddy is on all three of these layers. And you'll see that they fade out exactly when this thumbnail fades out. And of course, I can ease these keyframes and I can make this happen over a longer period of time and they automatically follow it, which is really nice because before we would have had to copy and paste these keyframes onto each layer. And then if we wanted to change it, we would have had to open them all up and change the keyframes for all of them. So let's take a look real quick at how this works. I'm gonna hit T to bring up the opacity on our logo. And we see this is red. So we actually have expressions controlling this. And so if I twirl this down, we can see these expressions are driving the opacity of the YouTube logo. And so this is what's called a pseudo effect up here, which means it's not a plugin that takes over everything. It's an effect that works in conjunction with the expressions that have been created in the opacity property for this layer. So because of this, you can't simply copy and paste opacity buddy, let's say to some other layer because it won't have these expressions in the property. So I hope that's not too confusing, but I just wanted to kind of quickly explain how Opacity Buddy is working in the background. And because it's not a plugin, you can send your project files to someone else or open it on another computer and everything will work just fine. Back to the features, you can change the opacity on the layer with Opacity Buddy on it. So we can make this 50%, for example, and now instead of fading from 100 to zero, we'll actually fade from 50 to zero. And everything is being interpolated as we go. So we get the same nice transition um, and we can even keyframe this. So if we wanted, we could keyframe the opacity going to 100 and starting at zero and it would still work and it would still be able to fade out. Let's take a look at some of the options that we've added. So in this comp, we have a piece of text and it is set to 100% and each one of these other text layers are set to the opacity of the numbers that you see. So for example, this 88 is, if I hit T to bring up the opacity, we see uh, it is set to 88% opacity. And then this layer, 100 to zero, if I hit T, you'll see this layer fades from 100% to 0% uh, 
uh, between one and three seconds. So this is a good comp for us to see all of our options. So if I type in opacity buddy and drag this on, you'll see that it creates an error right away. And that is because we are telling Opacity Buddy to use the opacity from the parent layer. And this layer is not parented to anything. If I hit T to bring up the opacity, um, you'll see that it becomes whatever layer I parent it to. So parenting it to 88 has brought the opacity down to 88. And if I parent it to 100 to zero, you'll see that it follows 100 to zero. So let's take a look at a few other options. So we have layer above. So layer above, you'll see the layer above it is 88 and layer below is 44. And then we can select a layer as well. Then we have to come down here and select a layer. So now if I select 100 to zero, you'll see that it fades out with it. And it's worth noting that if this is set to parent, it will ignore the layer that we selected and it will go to whatever we've told it to use the opacity from. Let's say that 100 to zero also fades in. So we'll keyframe this. So it fades in and then fades out. And we don't want test layer to fade in we want let's say it to scale in so i can keyframe what it's using for the opacity right here i'm going to set a keyframe for select a layer and then here i'm going to turn opacity buddy off so if i hit u to bring up our keyframes you'll see that opacity from is set to off here and then here it starts using the layer so that's a nice way that we can ignore the opacity keyframes from the in, but use the out. Let's take a look at one more example. There's a whole bunch of layers and they're all parented to a single null. All of these layers will follow the position and the scale and the rotation, but they won't follow the opacity. And you can see that we've actually keyframed the opacity here on the null and of course nothing is happening. And this is a common problem that I run into where I have all of these layers that follow one null, but then for the opacity, I have to drop in all of these keyframes and then tweaking them means I have to bring up the opacity on all of the layers. So I can select all of these and we'll add opacity buddy. And it's that simple. So now they all fade out according to these keyframes. And this is great because, you know, if we want to speed this up, all we have to do is move these keyframes. So that's great, but let's take a look at one more feature of Opacity Buddy. Let's say that we want to add a little bit of an offset so that the icons kind of fade off in a circular motion. Um, so this is the first one we'll have fade off and we'll keep that. We'll use the opacity from the parent. And this is the second one. So this is called icon two. And you'll see that they're in order, kind of clockwise, kind of the order that we would want them to fade out. If I change the use opacity from dropdown to layer below, now icon two is pulling the opacity from icon one. So that doesn't do anything right now, but let's say that we add a time delay of one frame. Okay, now it takes one frame longer for that to fade off than everything else. And we can copy and paste this to all of the other layers. Now, I know before I said you can't copy and paste it, but remember we've applied Opacity Buddy to all of these layers. So when we paste it onto a layer, it overwrites this pseudo effect that we've created and all of the expressions under opacity are already there and can read it if that makes sense. If it's a little confusing, just remember that you can only copy and paste this effect onto other layers that you've already applied opacity buddy to from the effects panel. 
So I'm going to apply this to all of our icons. And now you'll see that they kind of do what we were hoping, except that we come to a stop here. And that's because these are delayed. So imagine that each icon is delayed like this one frame. So we just need the position scale and rotation keyframes to take a little bit longer. So let's go here until everything's completely faded off and we'll drop our last keyframes there. And now if I play this, they kind of have a cool animation out as they all fade out. I wanna give a quick shout out to Euchre Media. I learned so much about expressions and it really gave me the tools to create a tool like this. So if you're interested in learning about expressions in After Effects, I highly recommend that you check out their YouTube videos and their website. But the point of this tool and other tools that, that I have coming are that you don't need to go into expressions and it allows you to ease some of the pain points of After Effects. Again, that is the first of three free time-saving tools that we're going to be releasing for After Effects. So make sure to click the link below to download your copy. And make sure you subscribe because next week, we're going to be releasing the second free tool. And eventually that link will have all three tools and possibly even more. And this is version one of the tool. So we really wanna hear your feedback and your comments so that we know what maybe we could include for a version two. And make sure to like this video so YouTube's algorithms know that it's a video that other people should watch.